Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we keep going into CRGE and the theme for today's video is gonna be a couple of tips, a couple of ideas I had about how to do world building using the Loom of Fate from CRGE. It's a great system and today we're gonna use it to answer a few questions I have about the game I'm going to play in. Even if you're not interested in my future campaign, this might interest you because I'm going to be giving you tips about uh, how you can use CRGE to, to create a world, to find the, the big picture of a world, all right? And if you're interested in my upcoming series, then, hey, you're going to get a look at uh, what kind of world we're going to be uh, living in. In case you don't know what CRGE is, as I said, it's been invented by Zach Best, which, uh, by the way, passed away. So uh, if you want to support his family, you can uh, go ahead on drive through RPG. I'm not sponsored and um, by uh, his rule sets, or you'll also find another place where you can uh, basically donate to his family. Um, and, you know, I'm promoting this because, well, uh, there wouldn't be this video and my last three videos if Zach hadn't uh, invented this system. So I have kind of a depth of gratitude to him. So CRGE, it's this system you can use with any RPG or you can use it on its own to invent stories where you'll use dice to help you come up with the events of the story to help you have surprise because if you're coming up with a story on your own you tend to not have any surprise you tend to fall into kind of um, um, cliches into common places but with CRGE you kind of have to work your imagination the C stands for conjectural so you'll roll for something you'll ask a question does my character uh, jump over the cliff uh, on the other side of the precipice yes or no if it says no uh you got to come up with uh, what happens then, right? You might uh, think he's going to make it and you didn't plan for him falling and yet now you got to deal with what happens. So this is how you can play uh, RPGs without having what we call a game master or a dungeon master if you're playing Dungeons & Dragons, right? You don't have to have someone telling you the story because you're using the dice, you're using CRGE, and that is what helps you understand the facts of the story from which then you can play with it with your player character. All right, if that sounds complicated, um, you can check out my video. It's gonna be uh, linked there, you can click up. Uh, on this side, I mean, and I do a much better job of explaining it. But, you know, I have to take like 16 minutes to do so. <laughs> so I'm not going to, you know, uh, do service to this system in just a minute or two. But yeah, it's a great system. And today we're going to use it to answer a few questions I have about the game I'm going to play in. So here's what I have. Uh, I don't have any more planning than what you see in front of your eyes. So I have a title for my, um, for my campaign. As you can see, it's going to be called The Dark Vortex or The Demise of the Grand Wizards. That means I have the premise there are powerful wizards engaged in a secret evil plot in the world of my uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, and by the way, you could use uh, this framework, right? You'll see I'm gonna be 
asking 10 questions to better understand the world. And then I'm going to ask a few questions about uh, the initial thread. Uh, which is uh, how uh, basically storylines are called in CRG. And I'm going to also ask questions about initial locations. Though I might have to come back to those when I'll have made my character sheet. So today we're going to answer these uh, for sure. My first premise is that there are powerful wizards engaged in a secret evil plot. And my character is being sent by his god to foil that plan. So this is kind of the big picture, the big arc of the campaign. I don't know anything specific about the powerful wizards. And I don't know all the specifics of my character or, um, yeah, how this is going to manifest because that's what we're going to discover throughout the campaign. And I have the title. So I know there is something that will be called the Dark Vortex. So if you are um, planning a campaign, you could also start with a big uh, kind of um, starting point. So I have the villain, kind of the big plot, and I have how my character fits into this. I think that's probably important. Um, and I have a title. So I have a concept that will have to be uh, uh, expanded upon during the campaign. I don't know what it is yet. I'm not. It's not going to be a campaign where I have a bunch of planning set aside and then I unveil this planning to you throughout my episodes. That's not how it's going to go. I'm going to show you all my planning up front, pretty much, right? I mean, I might have a couple ideas in my head of how the wizard might uh, look like and how they might function. But since I'm going to be rolling a lot on the Loom of Fate, any kind of planning I do might just go out the window. So instead, I'll be developing it in front of your eyes throughout the series. All right, so here I set 10 questions that will help me figure out what kind of world we are living in. Why? Why would I do that? Okay, why would I not just jump straight into my campaign? Well, it, for me, it's because if I do that, I'll just assume a bunch of things uh, right from the get go. And in my experience, uh, the average Dungeons and Dragons campaign, usually we assume that. Um, all of the races in the player handbook are part of the world. Uh, all of the monsters are part of the world. Uh, most of the deities they, they present us are part of the world. And, you know, if uh, that's your thing, that's what you want to do, fine. But I think it would be kind of cool to kind of make a world of our own. Uh, through this campaign. So I don't want to come in with all the assumptions from a regular 5th edition D&D. Instead, I want to ask questions that will determine if, for example, uh, right, for first question, are humans prevalent in this world? Is magic common in the world? It's going to affect how magicians are treated. Uh, how uh, often we find people that can do magic and uh, how often we find magical artifacts and how powerful they are and all those things are gonna be derived from these big important points um, and of course this is just um, an example this is these are the 10 questions I'm gonna ask but you can use your own to fit your uh, fantasy system. So now I'm going to roll on the Luma Fate, the first question. 
but I will be adding just a couple of rules. Okay, just so let's just make sure we all understand them. I will be rolling on two knowledge, which is the most random, uh, the one where uh, it's the easiest to get the unexpected result. But I think it's gonna be more fun that way. And I'm not gonna use the search count. The search count, usually it'll change a result either up or down, uh, whether or not uh, you get yes or no. So it's gonna be relatively random, but we won't have this accumulative effect of making each roll more random with the search counter. Are humans prevalent in this world? And we have, uh, looks like it's a 10. No, but. Interesting. So let me come up with why that would be. No, but. So turns out in my upcoming campaign, humans are not gonna be exactly prevalent uh, relative to the other species, but they will have a significant place. Now, is magic common in this world? Thirty-one is plain no. I kind of want to ask a follow-up question on this uh, magic. Um, and the second question. So magic is uncommon, but uh, is it feared? Yes. In this world, magic is rare and it is often regarded with fear and suspicion. Next stop. Are there lots of humanoid species? So human-like species, kind of like in Star Trek when everyone looks like a human with the prosthetics on. <laughs> so that's kind of the question we're asking. Uh, this is, yes, interesting. And I will ask a follow-up question. Uh, but I'll keep it, uh, I won't go into every detail, I'll keep it general for now because that way I think we can go into the granularity of it during our uh, role-playing sessions, basically. So I'll ask the follow-up questions, it's going to be a very cutting question. Are there all the species you find in... Uh, the Dungeons and Dragons uh, player manual. Thirty one, which is a uh, no. There are lots of humanoid species, but they're not specifically the ones contained in the DD player handbook. Interesting. I'm sure we'll get to know all about them through the campaign. Next up, is most of the world free? Um, and freedom in the entire meaning of it. You know, it could be um, people under the feudal system, um, debt, uh, servitude, um, or like dragons uh, oppressing people, it could be all sorts of things. Forty-one, no. So most of the world is not free. And I will probably be using my follow-up question um, for that one. Okay. Is most of the world known? Oh, 97. That's going to be interesting. 
that is yes and unexpectedly are awesome. I'm really glad we're we're getting some unexpected results in uh, some of those questions. Okay, um, uh, I'm, I'm I'm pumped. So if you don't know, when we roll unexpectedly, we have to then roll a d20 on this. And they correspond to special events, basically. Uh, so I'll conform them to, you know, the context we're in. So I got a seven. There are four. Um, framing. Okay. An NPC new or pre-existing or object becomes critical to the main thread. Okay, interesting. Ah, this is gonna work really well, I think. So I decided most of the world is known, All right, That's what we rolled on the Loom of Fate. But unexpectedly, uh, most of the world's trade revolves around one particularly important territory. Right, so <laughs> gotta admit, I'm kind of taking a page out of current events with uh, Ukraine and stuff like that, you know, talk about how important Ukraine is for uh, the world economy. I'm thinking, ah, oh, maybe the same thing is kind of happening in our fantasy world. And so, there is one place which is very impactful to the rest of the known world. Is most of the world wild? Oop. 27. Uh, plain no answer. And it kind of makes sense with uh, the fact that most of the world is known. So most places in this world are habitated to an extent. So there's kind of kingdoms a little bit everywhere. Settlements and uh, trade, perhaps. Is the dominant civilization decadent? Let's see. 18. No but. All right, so I decided to go with the dominant civilization is not yet decadent. You know, it's not like orgies and uh, murder and uh, bread and circus all the time, uh, Roman style. Uh, well, end of Roman style, like um, uh, in that uh, movie um, Caligula. It's not the Caligula movie. <laughs> but there are forces at play that try to push the, the big civilization towards decadence. And I also added, and perhaps other civilizations are on the path too. Should be interesting. And now a big question. Even though all of them could be uh, characterized as big question, but... Is technology advanced? Because I gotta say, I'd be kind of interested in uh, uh, playing in a very low-tech uh, campaign with like poor kinds of armor and everything. But at the same time, the inverse would be fun too. Like black powder and stuff like that could be a fun uh, element. Oh. And ah, oh, that's another one, and that's a zero. Wow, no, and unexpectedly. Oh, <laughs> okay, that could be pretty funny. Uh, let's see what we get on the unexpectedly. Ah, uh, another framing. Sure. Gosh, I'm getting a lot of the same roles, eh? But fine. So I'll say there's a kind of inventor. A NPC is critical. There's an inventor NPC somewhere in the world. 
the technology is very low tech. It's very, you know, not very advanced, probably. So no gunpowder. There's no magic or very little magic as we already established. Probably no or seldom any uh, like plate armor. Probably no full plate at all. No like knight in shining armor type stuff. Probably very, very basic furs and maybe chain mail as the top technology. Like, uh, like a Roman legionnaire st- type, uh, you know, hybrid armor. Um, but there is an important inventor, or perhaps a, a school of inventors out there in the world, like Da Vinci or Archimedes. Now, is the world at war, like uh, in general? Is there a big time of warfare or is it more a time of peace? So, no. There there are a couple conflicts here and there between kingdoms or provinces, like you'd expect. But the world is not currently in a large-scale war. It's not like uh, Game of Thrones, uh, uh, like uh, first few seasons, uh, War for the Throne. None of that. Only low-scale stuff. So we are finally at the bonus follow-up, which is going to be about uh, is most of the world free? So looking at all the facts we've just established... I'm thinking maybe there's not a large-scale war because one of the civilizations that is not the human civilization, if uh, there is that, um, that civilization might have conquered part of the world and in that way created a kind of peace. Like, you know, the kind of peace that empire... uh, for best of worst, uh, bring about. So I'm going to ask, is the top civilization keeping other civilizations in a subservient state? 93! Ooh! Yes, but. There is an empire that conquered many other kingdoms. But it is not the prime reason why people are not free. And that makes me want to ask one last follow-up answer. Uh, Though it might have a very big impact. And this is this one. Are the evil wizards responsible for that lack of freedom? 31. It's going to be no. Okay. Sure, so yeah, since it's not the evil wizards, I'll default back on my uh, first assumption. Because that seemed to me like uh, what makes the most sense. It's kind of what my gut feeling tells me. So we are told in the CRG rules that we should go with our gut feeling. So I'll say that most people are under a kind of feudal system which is why they're not free they're kind of indentured servants with that I think we have a nice uh, overview of uh, what are the facts of our world and we have tons of things uh, we'll be able to explore during play so there we are I ended up answering 11 questions uh, to set up the kind of the boundaries of my world, kind of the overview, the big picture. Um, I think this is an approach that can be replicated in any sort of um, RPG system to plan any kind of adventure. I think it's a good way to kind of get out of um, basically what you usually assume when you start a D&D game. 
Um, and since CRG works so well at getting out kind of your comfort zone, getting you into new and surprising situations for your characters, then I think uh, this just uh, worked out wonderfully. So let's do a little recap of what we determined. So, in the world of the Dark Vortex, humans are not prevalent, but they still have a significant place. Magic is uncommon and regarded with fear. There are a lot of humanoid species, but they're not exactly all the ones in the uh, player handbook. Most of the world is not free. There is a big empire and most of the world is feudal. Uh, most of the world is known and there are territories which are more important than the others. There's a, a kind of a central trade territory. It might remind you of Constantinople. Um, is most of the world wild? No. Most of the world is inhabited to an extent. Um, and there's a little bit of decadence uh, among the realms of the world, but it's not too bad yet. It's not like Caligula. Technology is not very advanced, but there are a few great inventors. The world is in a relative uh, peace. And, of course, there are powerful wizards engaged in a secret evil plot. Perhaps the wizards are tied in with this decadence. Or perhaps they will be tied in to something that has to do with... Uh, this important trade route. We've got lots of possible combinations and we will be exploring them in my upcoming series uh, that will hopefully, you know, keep you guys entertained. Otherwise, well, it'll be shorter than uh, I envisioned because I'd like it to be a long series. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed. I hope that even for those of you that are just tuning in to hear me talk about rules and uh, role systems and uh, role-playing ideas, I hope you got uh, something out of it. hope also that uh, you guys out there that are interested in my upcoming series are... Um, that, you know, you've, you're getting a little bit... Uh, uh, of uh, positive anticipation of uh, what I'll be coming up with. In my next video, I will be doing my player character. I'll try to make it as entertaining and uh, succinct as possible because that's usually the most boring part of starting an RPG. I want to end this by thanking you new subscribers that have come to my channel. Uh, it's an honor to have you guys. Um, the fact that so many of you relative to how many subscribers I had previously. The fact that you guys are here now makes me think you're interested in more CRGE. Um, so tell me if I'm right. And... Any, in any case, you'll have this upcoming series. I uh, hope you'll enjoy it. And um, love you guys. See you in the next video. Bye.